2022 was a big year for gaming monitors after about four years of the market kind of sitting stagnant. We had everything from Samsung's massive 55 inch arc to gaming OLEDs to respectable HDR performance on monitors that aren't over $1,000. What's up everyone, this is Jake with Digital Trends and I'm here to count down the best gaming monitors we saw this year. Before getting into the picks, keep in mind that we're focused on monitors that actually came out in 2022, as well as monitors that did something a little different, that tried to push the envelope forward in some way. Which translates as this list skews expensive. I have some cheaper options, but we definitely favored the biggest, boldest monitors we saw in the last year. With that caveat out of the way, like, subscribe, you know the drill, let's talk about some gaming monitors. Starting off with a newcomer to gaming monitors, or rather a return to form, Sony. Sony reprised its role in the gaming display market with the Enzone M9 this year, which is a lot better than it has any right to be. It's not a perfect monitor, so consider this more of an honorable mention, but it's still a great option, especially if you have a PS5 and a PC. It's a 27 inch 4K 144 Hertz gaming display, and Sony could have done what basically every other monitor brand does. Throw the same 4K panel on its own chassis and call it a day. But Sony decided to challenge the status quo with full array local dimming spread across 96 zones. That leads to much better HDR performance compared to monitors in this class like Corsair's Xenion 32 and Acer's Predator X28 that only offer a few edge-lit local dimming zones despite marketing great HDR performance. For problems, the stand is not very good with a limited range of adjustment, and the HDR, although very impressive at launch, has been outclassed by cheaper monitor as the year has gone on. Still, I couldn't pass up on mentioning the M9 since it really challenged HDR on monitors around $1,000 when no one else was. And on top of that, it includes some nice features like auto HDR tone mapping for PS5, making it a solid, if admittedly not perfect choice for gamers who have both a PC and a PS5. HDR on the M9 is great, but if you're looking for peak HDR quality short of an OLED, you'll want Samsung's Odyssey Neo G7 or G8. I'm recommending both because they are very similar displays. Both are 32 inch 4K monitors with super fast response times, and they both come with 1196 full array local dimming zones. The G7 isn't quite as bright, but the main difference is that the Neo G7 comes with a 165 Hertz refresh rate, while the Neo G8 comes with a 240 Hertz refresh rate. There are a couple of problems. The stand isn't great, and there are a few issues with flickering, particularly on the 240 Hertz model, but I had a great time testing the Odyssey Neo G8. The 240Hz refresh rate is great if you play competitive games like Overwatch 2, and the HDR experience is one of the best you can get outside of an OLED panel. Although the Neo G8 is great, it's really important to consider what PC you're pairing it with. The Neo G7 does almost everything the Neo G8 does, and most PCs can drive 4K at 165Hz much easier than they can drive 4K at 240Hz. Regardless of the refresh rate, both monitors look fantastic. Now, it's no secret that the best, most immersive HDR comes from OLED, and we got our first taste of OLED gaming monitors this year. The standout is ASUS's ROG PG42UQ. It's a 41.5 inch OLED TV masquerading as a monitor, sure, but despite all my assumptions about this large of a screen sitting on a desk, this monitor blew me away. I'm actually using it as my main display right now, and I don't plan on swapping it out. Of course, image quality, HDR performance, and colors are off the charts. This is the exact same panel that comes in LG's C2 OLED TV. ASUS just made some adjustments like overclocking the refresh rate to 138 hertz, adding some USB and DisplayPort connections, and somehow even managing a quarter inch thread for a camera at the top of the monitor. The size is a really nice balance for gaming too, if you can push it back on a desk or wall mount it. You have a really nice full view of everything going on with a keyboard and mouse, but I like the size so I can kick back with a controller and play games like Elden Ring or Marvel Spider-Man. It's tough to recommend right now just because the PG42UQ is sold out basically everywhere, and you'll only find it for a few hundred dollars more than what it should sell for. If it's too expensive or you don't want to wait for better stock, I'd recommend LG C2 OLED TV. You're getting the same panel minus a hair of refresh rate, and during the holiday season, I've seen the 42-inch model drop below $1,000, which is kind of a steal. All right, let's pivot to something a little cheaper, the GP27Q from Cooler Master. Cooler Master definitely isn't the biggest name in gaming monitors, but the GP27Q should make you pay attention. It's a 27-inch 1440p monitor with a 165Hz refresh rate for 500 bucks. 
Great, we've seen that same monitor half a dozen times just this year. This one stands out because it's using mini LEDs, allowing Cooler Master to squeeze in 576 full array local dimming zones. When I said there were better options than the M9 released later in the year, this was the display I was talking about. It can reach 1200 nits of peak brightness in HDR, and it uses a quantum dot IPS panel, so colors look fantastic. It's not super accurate out of the box, but it really doesn't matter. Considering the price and what Cooler Master is offering, the GP27Q makes even more expensive 1440p displays like Samsung's Odyssey G7 kind of look silly. I've only tested the 1440p version, but Cooler Master also offers the 4K GP27U. You're getting the same 576 local dimming zones, similar peak brightness, and a 160 hertz refresh rate just at 4K for $800. I haven't tested it myself, but everything I've seen shows it performs just as well as the 1440p version, so definitely keep it in mind if you're in the market for a 4K monitor. The only downside here is that although these monitors support G-Sync and FreeSync, you can't use variable refresh rate with HDR turned on. This is definitely something Cooler Master could fix with a firmware update, but it's an important caveat to note. Although it was a big year for gaming monitors, it wasn't hard picking a winner for this roundup. Alienware's 34 QD OLED. If you're a frequent Digital Trends viewer, first off, thanks for watching, but you already know what's up here. The perfect black levels and infinite contrast of OLED paired with a quantum dot layer to improve brightness and color creates one of the best images you can get out of a gaming monitor right now. HDR performance is great, and the near instantaneous response time of OLED means the monitor has incredibly low input latency. The image quality pairs really well with the form factor too. This is an ultra-wide 21x9 monitor, offering a wider horizontal field of view for immersive games like Cyberpunk 2077, and a little extra peripheral vision for those competitive games like Halo Infinite. You're getting a 175Hz refresh rate too, so the panel is plenty fast. It's the best of the best in the world of game monitors right now, which is shocking considering it was one of the first new gaming monitors we saw this year. And now, even as the year closes out, nothing has topped Alienware's 34 QD OLED. Those are the best gaming monitors we reviewed this year, but I want to know what you're using. Did you pick up a monitor that we didn't see, or are you using something a little bit older? Let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, make sure to leave a like on this video and get subscribed so we can edge ever closer to that 1 million subscriber mark. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, here are two videos YouTube thinks you'll enjoy.